boiling springs in wild Africa. Home to millions of flamingos. This is the Rift Valley in Kenya. The soil is volcanic, fertile, producing lawns and gardens that you might not expect in deepest Africa. And in the treetops above, nest the wondrously ugly marabou stalks that can soar on wide wings above one of the most dramatic landscapes on Earth. This was once sterilized by steam and molten lava, and now Mount Longanot is a huge green crater, a national park supporting an abundance of nature. Down there, in the greenery is a fascinating story to be told. It's about geology, soil, water, and the volcanism of Hell's Gate Gorge, home to rock hyrax, supposedly related to the elephant on the basis of its feet. and rock antelopes, the Clipspringer. This then, part of Kenya's Rift Valley, is an intriguing mixture of wildlife, geothermal activity and power production, industry in the bush, and local employment for thousands of Africans. On the whole of Lake Naivasha's 130 or so square kilometers, only one patch of this elegant blue water lily still survives. In the old days, the lake was covered with great expanses of water lilies, flowers and pads. On them trotted lily trotters, well equipped with big feet and nimble action. This floating carpet was full of life for those who could reach it. Black crakes had the same trick too, though with smaller feet. Flipping leaves was a skill and the rewards were great. Plenty of food out there like snails, worms and beetles. Lily trotters flourished all around Lake Naivasha in a blue haze of lily flowers. They even nested out on the water surface, but even well away from the shore, they weren't completely safe. Fish eagles, another key species here, could easily watch from a nearby thorn tree. The eagle's also hungry. The nesting lily trotter goes into a gallop. By late afternoon, the scene is changing. 
the flowers begin to close. And by dusk, the blue is gone and the action slowed. Now the tree ducks get ready for an evening's feeding. and more fly in to their favourite spot on Lake Naivasha as it was. Then came an invader, a plant. That community of lilies, that way of life was to change and be changed drastically in the coming years. Under them, it was dark as this plant takes over. The resident hippos would have noticed it too. The invader is Salvinia, or water fern, originally from Brazil in South America. It arrived in 1962 and has been here ever since. So have the hippos with mixed success. Black crakes can live on them, though. Such associations can work well in nature, but it's when man puts the wrong combinations together that the problems start. The next big problem came downstream from fur farms further north. Along rivers, past waterfalls, they swam and clambered towards Lake Naivasha. Koipu, wearer of Nutria fur, back then very popular. With their rodent teeth, they ate into the lake vegetation, including the water lilies already being squeezed by the Salvinia. Their burrows caused damage. They were not popular. There were lots of them, such that 17 were shot in just one hour. 